Well, it's August 9th, 2018, and we're here on Main Street on the corner of 4th and Main. And right over here on the corner in front of the RBC building, it's going to be the unveiling of the brand new bronze bus. delighted with the number of people who bra braved the rain today to unveil the statue of Martha Louise Black and the legacy that Rolf Hogan has given to us all with the entire series of busts. Um, we have many t dignitaries who have taken the time out of their busy schedule to recognize these legacies and I'd like to thank them. So on behalf of Rolf and Mark Hogan as well as artist Harrison Tanner I'd like to thank MP Larry Bagnall, Commissioner Angélique Bernard, former Senator and Commissioner Ion Christensen, who helped us today, Minister Keeney Dendies, Speaker Nils Clark, Mayor Dan Curtis, Minister John Stryker, uh, Deputy Mayor Roslyn Woodcock, and, Joc and Councillor Jocelyn Curtenu. Thank you. Your recognition of this event is very, very important to us, and we really appreciate that you have taken the time. Um, so without further ado, because I don't have the stories, I'd like to invite the man in the hat, our member of Parliament, the Honorary Larry Bagnall, to say a few words. Well, thank you very much. Thanks everyone for coming. You can see I'm I, uh, appropriately dressed in uh, 
the clothes that I had when I attended a, uh, one of Martha's parties in 1917 in the commissioner's residence <laughs> in Dawson. I was just a junior politician then. <laughs> but she threw great parties, I can tell you. Um, and this is very timely as, uh, uh, in the life of uh, our history because um, uh, Kathy Gates is writing a book on George Black and Martha Louise. And of course, Martha will be a big part of that in a moment. And before I start, I can't thank enough to the Hogan's for so much. Uh, I think we should give a big hand. They've done so much for our history. And one of the things, I'm sort of a history buff, and one of the things that is really depressing is how little we celebrate the great Yukon characters that we have and remember them. I think there's very few people in the world, and very few Yukoners that know as an example, one of the busts that was done the Robert Services sold more poetry than any poetry in the history of the world, more than T.S. Eliot or anyone. <laughs> you kind of just don't celebrate our great, uh, and all the great busts that uh, the Hogans are bringing to life and teaching us and teaching our kids about what a great history we have. I'd also like to, uh, and of course, you couldn't have had anyone other than over with Ralph uh, that better than I own Christensen. And as I'll mention uh, later how great a leader Martha was, I own it followed in her footsteps to show what great leaders women can be at a time when uh, men hold these positions. So I own was mayor, and she was commissioner, and then senator. And I think that's unprecedented and uh, a perfect person to do the unveiling today. It's also great to see the Minister of Justice was here today. And, um, and many of the great, huge Hogan clan, uh, wonder, including Eric, our French consul, uh, and uh, the Hogan clan, of course, as I said, have been so great in celebrating our history in so many ways. So we're here today to celebrate the storied life of a great Yukoner, Martha Louise Black, known as the First Lady of the Yukon, after her husband George became the commissioner in 1912. Martha came over the Chilkoot to the Yukon in 1898. Black was a pioneer, starting out staking claims and running a sawmill to support her three children and her first marriage, from her first marriage. While she left the North to return to her home in Chicago, she would return for good in 1901. From 1912 to 1916, her second husband, George Black, would become the commissioner of the Yukon, and this made her a central figure in the Yukon life in Dawson City. When World War I broke out, Martha and George went to Europe with a company of 500 Yukon service men. From spring of 1917 to August 1919, she volunteered for the Canadian Red Cross, administered the Yukon Comfort Fund, and visited the wounded, sick, and homesick Yukon men. She received the Order of the British Empire for her aid to Yukon servicemen, and became a fellow of the Royal Geographic Society for her work and lectures on Yukon wildflowers. In 1935, the general election, Martha Black became Canada's second female elected to the House of Commons at age 70. And I think the major point of, uh, that I want to make about Martha was that what a great uh, leadership role she had for women. She had all these various roles that I mentioned, many of which were only held by men at the time. And as Ione has said in her on CBC Today, she's a very persistent woman. She said, anything you want to do, you can do. And of course, she proved that, that women can do that and was a great leadership, I think, for many women um, and maybe I own as well, in taking on leadership roles where they, they might have not thought it was uh, possible or appropriate. So she lived out her life here in Whitehorse, passing away at the age of 91. And she embodies the Yukon spirit, and I'm sure many of you can uh, feel like this. Came here for opportunity, but fell in love with the people, the landscape, and the soul of the territory. She chose to make the Yukon her home to serve Yukoners in a variety of ways. And so it's fitting that she be amongst the chiefs, writers, and artists that now line Main Street. So thank you to the generosity of the Hogan family for commissioning the project and for their lifelong efforts to document and preserve Yukon history. Merci, Masicho. Mr. McPhee, thank you for coming as well. <laughs> thank you. I didn't know that you were here. It's okay. Um, I think that uh, Minister Bagnall did a very good job of introducing our next speaker, the former mayor, commissioner, and senator, Ion Christensen.
thank you very much and welcome everyone. And Ralph, thank you very much for, for doing this, having this wonderful bust that Martha put out on the 4th of May. I'm sure it's a, a position that she would absolutely love. She'll be able to control traffic. She'll be able to <laughs> there. So if sometimes you're going there and the light looks like it's going to be it's green, check it twice because she may just turn it around and make it red for you. I'm just going to tell you a few stories, uh, short ones about Martha. She was a part of our family, I guess you can say, every fact. She and my grandmother were very good friends. They're both members of the IODE and the, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the WA for the Anglican Church in Dawson. And uh, my grandmother used to do Irish draw uh, work. And uh, Mrs. Black had her make a tea cloth on a very large banquet table for her when she was in government house. And the tea cloth is over there underneath the the, um, the, the, the video that you'll be seeing as we go through the day. And uh, then um, when I knew her, of course, mostly when I was uh, really quite young. And uh, when we moved to Fort Selkirk in 1935, this is when she was getting into politics because George was ill. And uh, she used to be coming through campaigning and that on the steamboats. And uh, whenever they came into Selkirk, if they were going to be doing a Woodstock, she would get off and we'd come over and have tea or lunch or whatever it was with my mom and we'd visit. And I can remember uh, she, she, she and my mom were comparing corsets. Because <laughs> in those days, you put on your corsets in the afternoon and in the morning time you did your housework and your old house dress. And in the afternoon you went in and had a sponge bath and you put on your corsets. So these little lace up. And uh, I used to watch my mom do this thing. Mrs. Black and she were comparing, and afterwards I said, Mom, do I have to wear one of those when I get to be a big girl too? Fortunately, I don't. <laughs> Just let it all hang out. <laughs> but um, the, the other little story was um, when, when we moved up to Fort, from Fort Selk to, to Whitehorse, the Blacks were here on the corner of Jarvis and, and Main Street, or First Avenue, and we were on 4th and, 4th and, and Jarvis, and my mother used to come down visiting with Mrs. Black a lot. She used to help her whenever she had a receptions or anything. And so um, and Mrs. Black had this lovely ginger cat, and she loved it dearly. And we had a, a big epidemic of distemper here in Whitehorse. It was in the wintertime, and uh, the police were just were giving the infant vaccinations to all the dogs because it was the dog distemper. And so Mrs. Black said to my mother, find out if I can take Ginger down too, because I want her, her to have her shot. I don't want anything to happen to Ginger. But I said, well, I really don't. She's not a dog, and I don't think that that would be a problem. I want her to be not vaccinated. OK, mother said, I will phone the police. So she phoned the police station, and she said that, <clears throat> she didn't say who she was. She just said, uh, I, I just wanted to know if we could bring our cat down to be vaccinated. No, ma'am, this is just for dogs. You know, we're not having cats vaccinated, so that's fine. So we took our dog down the next day to be vaccinated, and it happened to be the same policeman that had taken Mother's phone call. And he said, Martha, of course, my dad being RCMP, they were they knew who she was. Martha, you wouldn't know what, guess what happened to me yesterday. Someone phoned me and asked if I could, she could bring her cat down to be vaccinated. Can you imagine that? I said, no, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess the last one was curtsies. Uh, I used to help mom. Uh, I was in the early, late teens, early 20s, when, during the time she was there. And uh, so Vincent Massey was coming, the Governor General. And uh, I was supposed to greet him at the door and bring him over and introduce him to Mrs. Black. But I had to learn how to curtsy. Because when the Governor General came into the room, I was to do a deep curtsy. And, uh, you know, your excellency. And, and then lead him over with his escorts to Mrs. Black. So I did this. She had me practicing with George at the door uh, for a whole week before this event took place. So I had it down pat. So I was all dressed up and ready and standing at the door. Door flew open and he came in and he said, took my hand. Who are you? I said, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. He said, well, oh, good to see you. I own. Where's Mrs. Black? <laughs> that was the end of the curtsy. <laughs> <laughs> but she was very exact. And of course, in her day, it would have happened if when she was going, if she, when she was in Parliament. Uh, this type of thing, curtsies and the whole bit, were, were very much in, in vogue. Uh, in the later days, that wasn't so much. It was much more informal as it is today, and probably just as well 
because we can have a much better bond with those that are that are in charge and be able to just go up to them and say, hey, this is a problem. So um, yeah, Martha was, was a, a wonderful lady. She, of course, a botanist and uh, did a wonderful uh, displays of, of uh, Yukon flowers, went across Canada with doing speaking tours with all of her, her books and pictures. She, she used to dry them. Uh, as a lot of her books are pictures of her dried flowers and they had a mesh over them so that they didn't get the damage. But um, she was just as, just as good a hunter of ducks as she was a picker of flowers. <laughs> but wonderful lady, great to have her on the on 4th of May. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Christensen. It's nice to have alliterative, alliterative stories, <laughs> cats, curtsies, and corsets. <laughs> I, I don't have to wear those. Um, there are um, many stories, and uh, so that you know, there is a video playing around the quarter, corner and copies of the original lantern slides that Martha Louise Black created. Um, I would now like to invite the Honorable Jeannie Dendies to come and say a few words. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. It's such an honor to come and speak, and especially after I own and, and our MP. Um, I own you've certainly been a, uh, a role model to me. And, and uh, it's really great to, to be here with you. I have a little story I'll tell about this morning on CBC, which was really a special moment. Um, so it's really great to be here, um, of course, on the traditional territory of the Kwamandan and the Ta'anquachan. Um, I'm really proud to be a Yukoner. I'm a proud Yukoner, and on these days, I'm even more proud to see the generosity and to see the um, graciousness of, of our community. Um, it's such an um, honor to be the Minister of Tourism and Culture in Yukon, and um, especially to be at a very, very special event like today, an unveiling of uh, such a, um, a tribute to such a remarkable woman. Martha Louise Black made so many meaningful contributions and touched a great many lives. And uh, the first lady of the Yukon, um, she was a trailblazer, an entrepreneur, a distinguished botanist, a respected politician, and a devoted mother, um, whose lasting influence can be seen in numerous landmarks, locations, which already bear her name. And for me, as the minister also responsible for the women's directorate, it's, uh, it's phenomenal to, to see the, uh, the tribute being made to such a trailblazer to all of us women in leadership. And there are many of us in this room today. And, uh, I, and again, um, thank you, Ione, for, um, for uh, telling the stories. And uh, today, this morning, I got to be uh, on CBC, we were doing a tribute and our, our work um, talking about tourism in Yukon. And so it was really amazing to, to listen to the stories of Ralph and Ione and talk about the last hundred years of tourism. Like talking of way back and when, you know, well, not that, I'm not saying that, but we were reflecting on it and how tourism started. And it was so incredible and just such a lovely lovely moment for me, um, the next generation of leadership in this territory to, to witness that and to, um, to, to be there for that moment and the beautiful stories that you told about uh, Martha Black and uh, her contributions to this beautiful territory that we all call home. So I, I really want to uh, hold my hands up to all of you, to the Hogan family for all of your contributions. There are so many and um, and you've contributed to um, just how special this territory is and the beauty, beautiful Main Street that we that we all love. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Harrison Tanner. He's here. He's gone 
Oh, he's going for an interview, yes. Uh, just such beautiful work. Um, so on behalf of the government of Yukon, I'd really like to sincerely thank Rolf and Margaret Hogan for their continued dedication to commemorating Yukon's unique history and encourage everyone to visit the Yukon archives to view their, ex their extensive collection of photos, correspondence, diaries, and press clippings uh, to learn more about this exceptional Yukoner. And again, thank you so much for allowing me to say a few words. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Minister Dendy. Um, at this point, I would like to recognize how generously the city has supported Rolf's efforts to create this bus and bust and the entire series of busts. Of note is Mr. Doug Nachuk, who has just been terrific in setting up the plinths and, and the veils and, and everything and, and choosing the locations very carefully with Rolf. And, we do appreciate because the city has contributed greatly to this entire series of seven in total. And I can tell you that another one is on the way. <laughs> um, as such, I would like to invite His Worship Dan Curtis that, to say a few words. Thank you, MJ. I'd be lying if I was to say my heart didn't skip when you said former mayor. Did I, I say that? Best. No, yeah, not, not now, but what I own. I'm thinking, oh my God, did I miss something? I <laughs> thought I'm still here today. But uh, as your mayor for now, I, I just want to say that I, what I've learned, if anything, in my time here is the value of celebration and recognizing those that have been here previous to us. And I just have to, to acknowledge that um, before their time comes and we have a bust on Main Street of, of Ralph Hogan or Ion Christensen or, or Mark Hogan, I want to tell these people how much they mean to us and our community. And what the work they've done is uh, is really recognized. And, and it's not just your family that recognizes it. Every single person in the city of Whitehorse and Yukon and Canada recognize that. I just want to give them both a great big hand, all three of them. Hand. <laughs> This is my fourth, my fourth bus that I've been able to, to attend and, and enjoy the celebration. And this one is kind of special, a little bit special, because as was alluded by, by some of the speakers previous to me, um, we do have a lot of uh, women uh, leaders, you know, past and current. And I think it's disproportionate, and I think it's about time. I think it's awesome to have uh, Minister McPhee here, Minister of Justice and Education, of course, Minister Dendy's tourism and, and culture and the women's directorate, and it goes on. Uh, the deputy mayor, Councillor uh, uh, Woodcock, rather, uh, Deputy Mayor Woodcock and Councillor Curtanu, um, Chief Bill and Chief Kane are the chiefs on our traditional territory where we are right now, and, um, and Laura Cabot is here as well, and, and Conan Slobodin. Conan Slobodin, I know you're not uh, you're not a lady, but you came all the way here just for this, so that's kind of exciting as well. So. I, I don't have any stories about Martha Black, but I will say she was born in 66 and I was born in 65, so I'm holding myself pretty well, I think. <laughs> pretty fair. And, and there, were, there were some really cool things that happened with Martha Black, and I know that she, she climbed the Chillicoot when she was pregnant, and, and she raised, uh, uh, you know, was born, um, um, wasn't born and raised here, but like, like many of the people that weren't born and raised here, fell in love with the people and the land and spoke to it at a great, great length. So we're very fortunate to have these iconic people that have come here, but again, I just can't overstate or understate the, the fact that, uh, that the people we have here right now are really what it makes, uh, what makes the Yukon great. And I've told, I've told Mr. Hogan and, and his wife this many times, I think the largest and the best contribution that they've given to our territory is their family. Their family is so humble and so modest, and they, they don't ever stand out front but they're always in the background doing something for the betterment of all of us, our entire city. And that too has to be recognized and acknowledged because a lot of generosity of time, we only have so much time, and, and time is money, and time is with away from your family, and of course uh, it's, uh, it's a real commitment to do things that, that you want to make your community better. And just by looking at the Arts Underground, this in itself is, a, is an awesome opportunity to show the generosity of arts and culture that really people gravitate to the Yukon and to Whitehorse because we have that, and we continue to celebrate it 
the thing that excites me the most is not only we celebrating iconic people like, like Martha Black and the great work that she's done, but we're also getting an opportunity to celebrate the future, the people we have here now, and the ones that are making a name for themselves and a name for us. So I know that uh, if, uh, if we had an opportunity to invite more people, there would be a much, much larger area for, for people to come and, and acknowledge and recognize how uh, fortunate we are to have Martha Black on Main Street. And uh, I'm pretty sure Mr. Nichuk is going to ensure that no one's going to walk away with her. I think it probably weighs a couple thousand pounds. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Hogan, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much for what you continue to do for our community. Uh, I've seen it my entire life, and uh, it really is appreciated. Thank you and your family. <laughs> Thank you, current mayor. <laughs> now, um, Harrison Tanner was whisked off by CBC to do an interview, but he has a wonderful representative here. His wife, Patricia Forche, is going to say a few words. Uh, Harrison didn't want his absence. <laughs> he didn't want his absence to um, uh, mean that he couldn't say a few words, and it will be very few. Um, I just, as someone that watched him uh, create this, um, Harrison only knew uh, Martha Black uh, through his research, um, but through it, he learned of the essence of her. He learned of her courage and determination um, that we've spoken of today. He also developed an appreciation uh, for her compassion and pride of the Yukon, um, her new home. As a sculptor, he often told me how important it was to him to like uh, the character that he was recreating. Um, a friend of his who wrote to Harrison today and um, saw him as he was sculpting uh, said, you said that Martha gave you joy because she was so self-contained and serene. That serenity speaks volumes about her strength. So it is perfect when you said you wanted to put peace and serenity on Main Street. <laughs> As Martha evolved from clay, she became a character present in our home. She was an inspiration uh, to Harrison and me, and often I asked her for her guidance as a woman. The bust sat there for some time, and it was so enjoyable to have her there. I liked her smile. I liked her essence. It, she was important to us. It was hard to give her up, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very, very happy to share her um, with all of Whitehorse and the Yukon. Um, in closing, I want to thank Rolf and Margaret for giving Harrison this wonderful opportunity. And I thank you all for being here. For me there, Patricia. I usually have Harrison next as my sidekick. He goes on too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud now to present Ralph Hogan to say a few words about the bust and the whole series. made a few notes to guide me through this. I didn't want to repeat what had already been said, but first of all, I just want to mention that uh, Marg is under the weather today and was unable to join us. She's been with, uh, uh, she's been uh, <clears throat> here for, uh, Anyway, um, she couldn't make it. She's on the weather of recovery. Uh, and I thought I'd mention that. I want to um, thank a few people. Most of them have been thanked by MJ. But um, Harrison Tanner, working with him is a total delight. Uh, I've enjoyed working with them on four statues, and each one has been a pleasure. Um, Douglas uh, 
network of the city has make one phone call and he makes things happen. So I want to personally thank him. He's here somewhere once again. And also <laughs> to thank the mayor and the council and the city of Whitehorse because any time I've called and say, you're willing to put in another um, big piece <laughs> they readily did so. So uh, the other person I want to particularly thank is, uh, I had a choice of many people, uh, I suppose, to ask to unveil this. The one person who lived in Whitehorse and personally knew Martha Louise was I own Christensen. And so called her and she was just delighted to participate. And that uh, pleased me to no end because there could never be a better person um, to do this. And I also want to thank Mrs. Gates. And I don't see uh, Gates here today. Uh, but anyway, uh, she's writing a book on Martha Louise. And I thought, who else could write the plaque to attach to the statue better than her with the research she has been doing? So I wanted to uh, publicly thank her for the contribution that she made. Uh, I don't know. I think that uh, I am just trying to. Oh, Steichman. Is Steichman here? Shauna Steichman. Anyway, she wrote a column in the newspaper that I appreciated very much. And she pointed out that we didn't have enough women. Well, at that point, we had already zeroed in on Martha, but she had another suggestion, and that was Edith Josie from Old Crow. Edith Josie wrote that uh, column, uh, Here Are the News. <laughs> it was published for years here in Whitehorse, in Edmonton, and elsewhere. And just one little story about that. She wrote it as she would speak. Uh, somebody convinced her that somebody should translate it into sort of English, pure English. And they tried that, and the column failed very quickly. She went back to writing the way she always did. Uh, but she was a, a delightful person. I appeared on stage with her once, I know, at a, at a gathering in Vancouver. Um, so I just wanted uh, to mention that. And Edith Josie, I can announce now, is the person who will be on the other corner of 4th and Main next year. There are many Yukoners who deserve to be honored. I've tried to concentrate generally on persons who are known nationally and internationally as opposed to being known locally. Yeah, but they were good writers and told good stories. Roy Minter wrote a great book on the White Pass. And uh, the other one I wanted to mention is uh, Al Wright. I don't know if many of you read a book called Prelude to Bonanza, but it's a fascinating book. It tells the history of the Yukon before the gold rush. And uh, Al Wright, uh, it's the first and only book he wrote, and he did such a magnificent job. Uh, Laura uh, Beaton, Pierre, or Burton, Pierre Burton's uh, wife, wrote a book, I Married the Klondike. It's got a foreword in it, actually, by Robert Service. But some of these books are perhaps out of print. I hope somebody would arrange to republish them because they're very good books to get to know uh, the Yukon better. And other person like, uh, I don't know uh, how many of you knew Al Oster, but Al Oster, he wrote over a hundred Yukon and Northern songs and performed them. And they're being played regularly uh, still on the radio station. We lost them, of course, this year, but Al was a great contributor to Yukon history. And one other person I'll mention, and I, 
could go on a long time, but Les McLaughlin, who uh, worked, we worked together on creating over 400 Yukon Nuggets, little stories of events, people, and things of the past. And uh, they are played on RW regularly, and uh, they're going to soon, uh, we've asked the McBride Museum to participate with us so that there'll be continuity of this forever, because they're good stories, and we're working with them now to make it uh, easier access for the public. I, I learned that a lot of material in our Hogan website was being used by newspapers and by the archives and by the private museum, but the individual that was too complicated to find anything on the web in order to read about these stories. Uh, but, so that's uh, being done. And I guess uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, Martha's 90th birthday, uh, we had the pleasure of uh, attending her 90th birthday in 1956. Took a bunch of movies and stills at that time of her, George Black, and if you look at the video that is running continuously in the corner behind there, uh, you will see other people like uh, Bishop Greenwood, who spent a lifetime opposing any gambling and if we bought on the lottery, uh, we bought tickets on when the ice would go in Dawson, he would condemn us for it. <laughs> <laughs> he was against any type of gambling. At any rate, and uh, Taylor, uh, he was uh, Taylor and Drury. Good picture of him as well, and others uh, I own are uh, uh, Victoria Faulkner and, and so on. So, um, that uh, is great that we have that, and you can look at it. And uh, Richard Lawrence, who's done a lot of work for the archives, a lot of work for me over the years. Uh, I just wanted, I was hoping he was here so we could thank him for helping out in getting this uh, operational. Uh, it only runs about five minutes, but he's, uh, he's here. He's over there. Richard Lawrence is there in the corner. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Richard, for putting that together because I thought that would be of interest to people. If I'd had my way, well, I could have had my way. <laughs> I chose to work with, uh, to find out who we should feature on the pedestal. And Martha has such a magnificent face at age 90. I sort of thought we should reproduce that face. Then, thinking it through, we chose, and you'll see her, she looks pretty young, uh, and that's when she was a member of Parliament. And that picture would be when she, it was around 1937, and she also, a postage stamp was created of that same picture at that time. So, uh, that's all the background information I have. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Rolf. I have to say that when I was doing some of the research to write the press releases, etc., I was really reminded about looking back, not just looking forward. We're so busy day to day with our business and everything. To look back and to realize the achievements. I mean, I imagined Martha climbing the scales with two little boys complaining behind her, pregnant. I mean, and on all the other people that complained, and yet she made it, she staked planes, it was just, it was inspiring to me um, to look back as well as to look forward. But that wraps up our, our speeches today, and I hope that you'll take a few minutes to look at the original lantern slides. And I think one person we forgot to thank Rob was um, Leslie Buckin, who made it possible for the for us to have the lantern slides from Yukon Archives for the reproductions here today. So thank you, Leslie, for setting that up for us. wine. I conscripted um, one of my nieces to serve it, and there's sandwiches and of course the whole display. So please enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you.